in recent uh, recent days, we've all witnessed the devastation uh, that's been caused by Hurricane Florence. Um, we've grieved as we've watched the plight of our fellow citizens. Um, we've been especially moved by the plight of students and teachers uh, and other educators in the eastern part of the state and the southern part of the state. We are grieved by these things, uh, and we want to do something about it. Last week, I had a far-fetched notion. I called Superintendent Mark Johnson. I called former state superintendent uh, June Atkinson, and I proposed that, uh, that we work together to do something to help kids and educators in Eastern North Carolina. Now, that may seem like uh, an, an unlikely venture upon which to engage, but I want to tell you that they stepped right up. They, uh, they both said yes, and they said it enthusiastically. So we're really pleased uh, at this uh, combination of, of talent and, uh, and of interest in helping the kids of, of North Carolina, the educators of North Carolina. Joining us in this are Eric Davis, State Board Chair, former State Board Chair and former Secretary of Human Resources and former President of the State Chamber, Phil Kirk. Not, that's not him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to hurt his reputation. <laughs> uh, and Henry Johnson joins us. Now, Henry, I, I, don't, I don't want to read the whole resume, but y'all will recall Henry served as Associate State Superintendent in North Carolina, then as State Superintendent in Mississippi, uh, and was State Superintendent in Mississippi there until right at the point of Katrina and then served as Assistant U.S. Secretary of Education during the Katrina recovery years. Uh, and so Henry joins us as well. Our intent is twofold. First and foremost, we want to help the students and educators who were impacted by the storm. That's job number one. But we also want to send a message. We want to send a signal that these circumstances call for leadership that transcends political barriers, leadership that reaches across divides, leadership that says, first and foremost, the interest of our kids, our educators, is paramount. So we're joining together. Uh, the folks in this room represent friends, colleagues, supporters, partners, collaborators in this process of reaching out and, and, and working to help kids and uh, uh, teachers and other educators. Um, partnership is going to take many different forms, but one thing that I think you probably acknowledge is that there are some circumstances, political gatherings and things like that, where you wouldn't find some of these folks at the same, same table. There are some political discussions where you wouldn't find some of these folks together, but they are here together today because this really matters. They also are reaching across in order to support an initiative that's going to be good for kids and teachers. We're here to announce the creation of FAST NC, Florence Aid to Students and Teachers. It's actually intended to provide aid to students and educators, but we found that the acronym didn't work all that well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we stuck with, with Florence Aid to Students and Teachers, but, but trust me, our interest is in helping educators, public school educators, public school students, and charter, public charter school uh, educators and, and uh, public charter school students. I want to ask Superintendent Johnson and former three-term State Superintendent June Atkinson to tell you a little more about what we're doing. Well, good morning to all of you. It's a pleasure to see so many friends in the arena of public education. As a child in the first grade, I remember being swept up by my aunt when a hurricane hit my small community in Virginia. I still remember to this day that water was up to my knees and rising. My shoes were ruined and my yellow dress was soaked. I remember the safety of my aunt's arms. And I also remember going home to a home that was warm and safe. Even though it has been many, 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 many years since I have been in the first grade, I still remember that event it is very much etched in my memory. And then fast forward to today. The water, the floods, the wind have changed the lives of our children who were in the path of Hurricane Florence. 
and that will change their lives for many years to come. And imagine the world of a child who no longer has a home and whose family does not know where to turn. Imagine that child who embraces the simple comforts of a bed, surrounded by family, a loving pet, being compelled to face head on a merciless force of nature that swept it all away. Then imagine that child who is also faced with going to school that is damaged and whose teachers and other supportive educators are suffering themselves. In the best of times, it takes many spokes of a wheel to develop a child's knowledge, humanity, and strength to meet the demands of life. As adults in North Carolina who are responsible for the will of our children, we must do something. And today, I stand here with people who recognize that we must heed the call to act on behalf of our children. As former state superintendent, I, without hesitation, ask for the dollars of North Carolina to help those who are suffering, especially our children. And by working together as a hub of a wheel, we can warm the hearts and restore the hope in the hearts and minds of our many children. But first, we must know what those needs are. And we are very grateful to the Superintendents Association, the North Carolina Association of School Administrators, and NC Papa, who are working diligently to contact local superintendents and principals to determine the needs of our children and educators. And I know today we have Jack Hoke, who's the Executive Director of the Superintendents Association, Tracy McBride, who represents NC Papa, and Dr. Glenda Jones, who represents NCASA. And they, along with other partners, will help us determine needs and then address those needs. It is our business as adults and supporters of educators to empower our children. And should any circumstance interfere, we must be there to lift them up and restore them. And that is what we are asking North Carolinians to do with FAST. Spread the word about the State Board of Education's fund and give generously. Our children depend on us as an adult. Thank you. Superintendent Johnson. <clears throat> Thank you, Superintendent Atkinson. Thank you, Superintendent Ward, uh, for uh, joining with us to bring this together. Thank you for the rest of the steering committee and all of the partners we have. And I know we'll be uh, getting out that long list of partners who are involved in this. Uh, I recently returned from Eastern North Carolina. Uh, last week, I was in Craven County uh, to see uh, how hard hit it was. Uh, this, uh, this week, I was in New Hanover County and, and drove through uh, Pins Pender, Onslow, um, a lot of flooded farmland. It cannot be understated the impact that this storm has had on eastern North Carolina. Schools right now are estimated, and this is, this is rising, this is our most current estimate, at least $30 million in damages to schools in eastern North Carolina. Uh, that is going to continue to rise because we are hearing reports as counties like Jones County gets back in, Columbus County, uh, that we had some schools that had standing water in them. And so we're going to get to those schools and see exactly how much damage those schools, those schools suffered. One of the most remarkable things about my visits to the counties that were affected thus far, though, were that even when schools were not as hard hit by the storm, and they're in a place where they can be cleaned up, uh, they can be patched, they will be safe for students, the entire surrounding community for those schools were devastated, absolutely devastated. In Craven County, uh, the school will be ready to open in just a week, but the entire community is a loss. Homes were flooded up to the rooftops. So that means that not only do we have families, parents, students who have lost everything, 
We also had teachers in those communities who have lost everything. And they have nowhere to go right now. So that is why we're working very closely with the state government, with the federal government, to make sure we have a place for people to return home, whether they're scattered throughout the state or if they're living it still in shelters. But importantly, we want to make sure they have the supplies they need. When we were talking about putting this group together, one of the, the most important points that we need to emphasize is the school year was just getting started. It was just getting started. All the supplies were new and they were ready for the, for the year to come. And many of those are now ruined underwater. So this is a very important effort, and I'm glad we have so many partners to help us with this, of raising the funds and uh, ways of getting the physical supplies and getting those out, uh, not just to what we saw in national news, Wilmington or New Bern, but also those counties that were really hard hit in the east, Columbus, Jones, Pender. Uh, many, many, many students were affected by this, many teachers, and I am proud to stand with this group and uh, ask for support from North Carolina. There is a favorite saying that I like to share. It's in our state toast. In North Carolina, we say that we are where the weak grow strong and the strong grow great. And I am proud to stand uh, with my colleagues here today and truly show that we are a state that comes together when times are tough, puts aside differences, and we do what's right for students and educators. Uh, so with that, I'll thank you, and I'll hand it over, I think, next to uh, State Board Chair, Mr. Eric Davis, who can describe a little bit more about the uh, actual program. Thank you, Superintendent Johnson. Um, on behalf of my colleagues on the State Board, we are all in, standing with our superintendent unanimously in support of this relief effort, and we are delighted to make available the North Carolina Education Fund as the vehicle to receive and then distribute donations to help our students and teachers uh, recover from the devastating impacts of Hurricane Florence. And to our students and teachers, know that help is on the way, help to get you back on your feet and back in school. Um, the fund is about more information about the fund is available at ncpublicschools.org slash fast nc but now is the time for north carolinians all across our state to stand up to care for our neighbor together and to help our students and teachers get back on track as a result of hurricane florence so i challenge us all Let's do the right thing. Let's show our students and teachers just how much they mean to us by donating generously and helping our students get back to school. So for more information, I'll refer you to the website. The board will be taking additional action next week, so stay tuned. We will be um, ensuring that the fund gets off to a good start. So with that, I'll turn it over to my friend and former board chair, Mr. Bill Kirk. Thank you. I didn't think I had a hurricane story, uh, certainly not one like June's, but I did happen to think of one standing up here. I was very fortunate to have a house full of people from Newburn, relatives from Newburn and from Moorhead City to stay with me for five days. And I won't go into any of those details, but uh, we all survived. <laughs> but I was not there. I was back having breakfast with Mike Ward when they left uh, on a Monday morning. and. Uh, I got home and uh, I found this uh, some money and they said we did not leave you a check because we knew you wouldn't cash it. Mm -hmm. I would have fooled them. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so they left cash and I'm pleased to say that I'm donating that uh, to, to this fund uh, plus uh, hopefully a little bit more. And then the second hurricane story. I'm not sticking to your script, by the way. He's on, he wrote, he, you never did. He told me what to say, and then he said it all. So uh, that, allows me to tell, that allows me to tell stories. I went into Bible study, which might surprise some of you, at the Baptist Church last week, and the, man, the Bible study said, did you know the next hurricane is going to be named Kirk? And I thought he was pulling my leg. And then I later read that we had a tropical storm somewhere far away named Kirk, and it was not expected 
to hit land. So that was that was the good news. Anyway, I'm very excited. We're very excited to be here uh, as a bipartisan group on a nonpartisan challenge. And I'm pleased to say that, as others have said it better than I can, of the way that we have come together uh, on behalf of children and educators. And you will see uh, some of the partners up there, and I would emphasize that we have 20 some so far, but that was put together in a hurry. And we thank everybody uh, for saying yes, but we've got a lot more people to call and a lot more partners uh, that we're anxious to add to the list. And our partners, we expect them to spread the word and to make contributions, uh, personal or otherwise. Uh, but mainly to spread the word, send everybody on their email list, and uh, uh, get the word out because people are wanting the help. And by the way, I've already run into a few people that said, well, I've already given. I said, you hadn't given to us. So uh, <laughs> let, let's do that. So I'm supposed to introduce uh, my friend Henry Johnson, but uh, don't worry. Okay. Uh, Mike <laughs> Ward has already told everything. So. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, let me thank the other steering committee members. Um, thanks to the partners and those interested in this issue and those who are going to help contribute. Uh, but special thanks to Mike and Phil. They called me last week and uh, said, have we got a deal for you? <laughs> and they told me what uh, they uh, conceived and what they wanted to initiate, and I said, count me in. Um, this harkens back to the late summer, early fall for me, of 2005. I had just left the state superintendency in Mississippi and was in Washington the very next week. I got a call. Henry, you need to go to Mississippi and Alabama, Louisiana, see what's going on down there. Now, President Bush and Secretary Spellings dispatched me, along with others, to assess the damage and to talk to people and find out what was going on. And so we went down, uh, couldn't fly into Jackson, we had to, I forget where we landed, and took a car. We visited schools that were devastated, uh, some still underwater. The smell was horrendous. But what struck me the most was the group of superintendents with whom I met said, yes, we want help in restoring our buildings, our school buildings and our offices, but we want you to see the community. And so I took a tour in the community and saw concrete slabs where once houses had stood and steps with our buildings. And the superintendent said, help the schools, but more importantly, help the students and the families in the communities. And that's what this effort is designed to do. Thank you. Some of you know that uh, at the end of my second term, uh, we went to Mississippi. Uh, my wife, Hope, was appointed Methodist Bishop for the state of Mississippi. And we got there a year to the day before Katrina. Uh, you've heard other references to Katrina. Um, one of the things that, that happened during that time, I had joined the faculty at Southern Miss, um, and one of the things that we did was get a grant from the uh, Rand Corporation to uh, study the impact of the storm on the kids uh, who were displaced. Um, and so we learned about their story, and the story is what you would expect. Terrible news on their achievement, terrible news on their attendance, terrible news on behavior. And what was even sadder, because it was a longitudinal study, is that we, we, we learned that those difficult impacts are not only tough in the immediate aftermath of the storm, but even worse and over time. Um, that was their story. By virtue of what we do today, and what we will be doing in the coming weeks and months, we hope to change the story of students in similar circumstances in North Carolina. It's our intent to create a different story here. Um, and to do that, we're gonna reach out to support kids, we're gonna reach out to support educators, and we're gonna do that in collaboration with a whole lot of wonderful partners and allies. With that in mind, before we turn to, to, to questions, I would just like to ask the persons who are here representing these organizations uh, who have signed on uh, as collaborators, as partners, as allies, to step up front. Join us, if you will, here at the front, and uh, let's just let uh, folks have a little bit. Thank you.
you've seen the screen, you have a sense of who these organizations are. Educator membership organizations, community of faith, business organizations. These are good folk prepared to do some good things for kids. We're so, so pleased uh, that they are willing to uh, support us and, and help us uh, by opening their networks uh, to this initiative. With that, we'll uh, open it up for questions. And um, those of you who are up here, stand by. <laughs> <laughs> questions. News 14. Um, this came up in the conference call yesterday. Will businesses be able to allocate funds to a specific area or region? You know, that was part of the conversation. Let's, let's get Sue, uh, uh, Chairman Davis up for that. Yeah, that's something we're still working on. We want to try to create that capability, and as soon as we can uh, guarantee with certainty that we'll have that capability, we'll definitely announce it. And how will the funds be distributed? So um, requests will come in to the steering committee who will evaluate those. Requests will come from superintendents, from charter school leaders, from um, agencies, partners, and um, the steering committee will evaluate those uh, requests and make a recommendation and the state board will act to uh, transfer the funds. Um, Andrea Blanford with ABC 11. Can you be a bit more specific about how if teachers need to report to their principal, that request makes its way up. I mean, how are we going to expedite the dollars that are needed? Yeah, so um, the request will flow through district superintendents. And then because there's then just one next step is coming to the steering committee, and then the fund can be distributed right here in Raleigh that we don't have to go through any other hands or any other organizations in order to expedite the process. Uh, Liz Slummer, North Carolina Public Radio. What are your goals? How much are you hoping to raise? Well, we don't want to set a low expectation. We're going to count <laughs> on the generosity of North Carolinians and how they value public education in this state to set the goal. And um, so um, we're going to rely on that generosity and uh, let that speak for itself. Yeah, you have oh, oh, are there any priorities of where money will be sent, whether that's purposes or locations? Uh, we haven't established any pre-existing conditions or priorities at this time. Uh, we want to hear from superintendents and charter school operators and, and state partners in order to best evaluate, because we, we know they have a good feel for what's on the ground and what our students and teachers most need. I'll just say one word uh, to that. Um, one of the most important things we've learned uh, in disaster response um, uh, is that what matters most in the early stage, in addition to securing resources, is listening well. Um, and uh, so, so the first question in this process is going to be, what do you need? And, and as Superintendent Atkinson, former Superintendent Atkinson uh, pointed out, a lot of folks are already hard at work asking that question and getting answers to that question. Superintendent Johnson is out seeking answers to that question as well. The department is, is, is looking for those kinds of answers as well. What do you need? You might want to say what? Yes. Uh, for example, yesterday I was in Wilmington and I was meeting with the superintendent in New Hanover County and principals about the steps that they're taking not just to open up school, but also how to address the needs of these students when they come into school. Uh, their, their number one goal is not getting back to teaching the state standard course of study. It's not getting the testing started up the first day. It's, it's checking on their students and checking on their students' families. That is the number one goal for these school leaders. That is what they'll be doing in the first days back. And to get more into the weeds, they actually have set up uh, a network of Google Documents uh, where principals will be putting their needs on the Google Documents, sharing it with the central office in New Hanover County, uh, and that's actually one way they are keeping track of needs because they already have so many uh, people wanting to give, they just need to know what. So we'll be working to set those systems up with other uh, superintendents and districts as well. That's very helpful. And I have a follow-up question. You said you were touring Eastern North Carolina schools. Can you describe more about the damage that you saw? You said $30 million in damage so far and rising. And rising. So what did you see? Uh, 
there were issues in Craven County where we had some flooding to schools. Luckily, it didn't hit classrooms. But the big problem that they're facing right now in cleanup is there was water in the school and the power was out. So when there's water in the school and the power's out, you get mold. Um, there, you know, I, I, uh, Henry Johnson talked about the smell. Um, I was not going to go there, but I will tell you, <laughs> um, it, it, it is real. And uh, that is a huge hurdle to overcome when first you have to clean a school and make sure it's safe for students. So even if there wasn't structural damage to some of these schools, where water got in and there wasn't power for a week, uh, we have to make sure we take all the steps necessary to make sure it's clean and safe. And as I did say, we were getting reports from Jones County and Columbus County uh, that we, we need to get in there and see as soon as the waters recede. We might have some schools that uh, actually had up to two feet of water in them. So we're gonna get down there next and address those needs as well. <coughs> Jack Hoke, on behalf of the School Superintendents Association, has been doing some assessment work as well. Jack, do you want to say a word? Thank you. I'm Jack Hoke, Executive Director of the North Carolina School Superintendents Association. I've been in constant contact with the 20 districts most impacted. Uh, of course, you've got the city schools in Clinton and uh, in Whitewell City. And those superintendents and leadership teams, obviously, the first thought, you know, they were working to check on their children, the staffs, the staffs have been displaced, principals have been displaced. They're compiling a list as they've been able to get into schools. I talked to Les Tub on the way over here. Brunswick's going to be closed till October the 9th, it looks like, uh, which is pretty significant. That's uh, close to three and a half weeks, four weeks. And so superintendents are, are compiling those lists, will share those with me. And what we're doing is the districts that weren't impacted, they're collecting supplies and items for students and teachers. And we're trying to be targeted with what we're doing. Once we have those supplies and items, then we will divide the districts up to make sure each district gets a, a good amount of those. And I talked to Ron Hargrave, the superintendent of Scotland County yesterday. He had three housing areas destroyed, and so he was trying to determine the number of students there, and we're going to get a, a lot of student supplies for those particular, and it was K-12 students. So working closely with our superintendents who were talking to their teachers and principals, obviously the academic piece is secondary. It's getting children back in school in some type of normal routine including with the staff and there's going to be a lot of social and emotional learning issues as we get back in school so we are very excited to be part of this and i've been on this since last since the day it hit and we're going to provide all that information to this group so we can get the resources where they need to be thank you other questions uh, current year news and observer since you are Presumably hoping to get a good deal of money raised. How I guess are you going to go about ensuring that this money will be properly allocated, properly distributed, and get into the hands of the teachers and the students' families that, so that um, they'll actually get the benefit from, from the program? Yeah, just a couple of, of preliminary uh, thoughts about that, and then I'll turn it over to, to Chairman Davis. Um, we want to accomplish two goals. We want to be nimble enough that we get resources out quickly, that we are, are, are responsive in a timely fashion to getting money out. We also want to make sure that we're accountable for the funds, that we have good mechanisms in place for ensuring that uh, they're probably accounted for and, and uh, that, that, that good measures are taken to make sure that, that we, we honor the public trust in their disbursement. Um, so with that as, as kind of a philosophical backdrop, let me, let me ask Chen Davis. Sure. Well, since most of these requests will flow through district superintendents, and we have high confidence in their capabilities and the abilities of their staff, uh, we're confident that the funds will flow to the point of need that they identify, and uh, we will follow up to ensure that that happens. Other questions? Uh, at this point, are you focusing on getting specifically money or on supplies, of, are you only taking money? What, I guess, from what you're trying to collect? Well, we're not only taking money, but obviously money is the most useful tool that we have since we can apply it across a variety of needs. But uh, going forward, we'll uh, identify ways that uh, partners can contribute beyond money. But money is the, is the key item at this point. Anything else to add to that? Um, one more question. 
question here. I see that uh, credit card donations will be accepted soon. I know you guys are working very hard to get this off the ground, so any timeline on that? Yeah, we don't have a specific timeline, but we're optimistic that we're close to a secure solution for that, and as soon as we know, we'll be ready to take it. So we're anxious to get that in place. Any other questions? Folks, thanks so much for coming out. Um, we're going to try and do some good here.